Rebic, Rafa, tira, gol! Raffaele Leo! Oggi segna Leo! La mia giornata è iniziata così! Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sempre Milan podcast. I'm your host, Oli Fischer. Back after a week absence, I was in Paris, so cheers for filling in there, boys. Um, and yeah, got Anthony Talgrud here. Yep, always here, um, never happy, and yeah, <laughs> glad to be back. <laughs> we got Maybe Madison. you need to take a week off if you're never happy. Well, it's because we can't get a win, so. Yeah, maybe we should all start rotating just for like stress reduction purposes. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, break for mental health and all that. I think, it, yeah, that would be good. Um, but yeah, it's not easy, is it, boys, really? Uh, was kind of hoping that we'd at the very least have some goals to talk about or something to, to flesh this out. I mean, I know that I famously managed to waffle on somehow for 40 minutes every episode at least. But I'm You're really already doing struggle. it before Maddie introduced himself. He d- he basically did. <laughs> he didn't say anything. Maddie, say hello. Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. say hi. Hey, Harvard's right. here. There we go. Um. So yeah, it, it, God, it's it's. I mean, we knew we weren't signing up for the easy life by supporting this football team. Uh, I think it'd be fair to say that. But there we go. After two bad results in a week, obviously I wasn't on to talk about the Bologna game. I watched that in a bar in Paris, and um, the locals were looking at me funny as to why I was slapping the table every time we squandered an opportunity. I think that's par for the course. That was a frustrating game. And then, yeah, we had Torino um, last night. Destiny still in our hands. That's the thing you could say that we have going for us. Napoli had just lost at home to Fiorentina. Inter did the business against Verona on, on Saturday, but it was still an opportunity for us to move four points clear at the top of the table. And we flapped it again. Yes. Yeah. Um... Yeah. So my experience was interesting because uh, I decided to go to the bar for the first time since uh, November when I got in a, an altercation with the bartender. Figured it's been long enough I could sneak back in there. Uh, turns out that guy doesn't work there anymore. He got in trouble and I didn't, so that's cool. And, uh, Wait, for that altercation? I would assume so. You, you can't be, you know, fighting patrons, but, you know, whatever. Um, undefeated, I win 1-0, so fuck that guy. Um, regardless. TKO. Yeah, TKO. Um, I get <laughs> TKO, in there. TKO, you're fired. <laughs> so I get in there and like five minutes before kickoff, eh, maybe ten. Bar, new bartender comes up. Everyone's got to clear the building. There's a fire. We're like, ha ha, uh, whatever. We're all just drinking our stuff. Uh, Nate's eating his his burger, and the guy's like, "No, nah, this isn't a joke. Like the police are coming in right now." We look. Police came in the back door. They're like, "Everyone police? get out! There's a fire!" And I'm like, what the fuck? So, um, go outside and there's. Three fire trucks piling in my car. I get I, we park on the street, obviously, it's a big city. And first time ever, I'm parked right there. Normally, I gotta go quite a ways down, but I'm parked right in front. Well, now my car's blocked in by by fire trucks and police cars. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. My car is gonna get destroyed here. Um, and we're just waiting outside. And then, then we get in just in time for the game, like they were they were lining up as soon as uh, we, we finally got back inside fire was averted but yeah we're sitting there we're watching this really boring game and um some guy didn't know who he was but he brought his girlfriend who clearly had never watched the game before and she went to the bathroom came back and it was like the 27th minute she goes no one scored yet and i was like oh Mm -hmm. you're in for a long day lady (laughs) and uh yeah she was because she was bitching about at halftime she's like finally it's over okay you need to leave oh no yeah yeah. it's not we got another 45 she said that at halftime yeah, at halftime, I was like, you got to do oh, all of that one more time. Sorry. Oh, wait until she hears about the 100-minute World Cup games that we're going to have. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh. yeah, man, not good. That's the most exciting thing to do with the game, actually. Uh-huh. That that's story. why I told that and started talking yeah. about the game. <laughs> Opening up strongly there. I think that's pretty good. Uh, do you know what, right? At least I'm going to ram- rant now about the game itself. At least against Bologna in that first half, we looked a bit sharp and we looked purposeful and we looked like we were we were we were gonna find a way. I never got that impression against Torino that we ever had it in us to create the one scoring opportunity we needed. I mean the first half, the one save that um, Berisha had to make was on Calabria and it wasn't necessarily the most difficult shot to parry away. And then in the second half there was that one from Tonali where he cut back inside and again Tonali admitted himself that he sold the shot a bit too much and the keeper was able to adjust and save it wasn't an awful lot else apart from that. Just a lot of, of hopeless lumped balls forward to Giroud, hoping for flick-ons and knockdowns. There wasn't really any quick 
passing exchanges. Um, there was no unpredictability. We were quite slow in our build-up from the back and that allowed Torino to get back into that bank of seven players that they did. Uh, yeah, man, wasn't really that encouraging for a team that's supposed to be making a statement result and sort of resuming no, the title challenge. We, we always get stale in the springtime. Yeah. You know, this this happens every season. Um, hopefully we uh, can turn around here for Genoa, but the attack is just abysmal. You know, yeah. Tonali was uh, the only one um, who did anything creative that I, I saw. I mean, I only watched the second half again, like last week. I'll be able to watch the full game this week. So hopefully, yeah, uh, you got to stop admitting you. that. Like. Look at you, yeah. <laughs> Mate, this is the one week you could have got away with saying that you watched the whole thing because nothing happened. So I'm not going to question you on any incidents. <laughs> the first half was so boring. <laughs> My God, I forgot all about it. Yeah, didn't we all? Honestly, yeah. Tonali was the best player in the whole game, I thought. And that's not yeah. saying much because I didn't think he had that great of a game either. No. Which is bad all around. I saw a tweet and I can't remember who it was from or what the exact numbers were, but it it was like basically everyone in our attack and when their last goal was. And it's it oh, was I a that, sad yeah. read. Very mm-hmm. sad read. It was like Brahim hasn't had a goal since September. Giroud's had one. Um, there's zero this month. Liao's had zero this month. Latin's had one in 2022. Like it's been Rebbage zero or. Oh, here we go. I've got the list. Um, yeah, Ibrahimovic's yeah. last goal, 9th of January. Brahim's 25th of September. Uh, Rebic's 19th of Feb. Salamaka's. Uh, tw- I can't work that out. I think they flipped it up. Uh, uh, 2017? BC stands uh, for be. um, before Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 19th of Feb for Messiah. You know, the uh, last time I talked Feb, shit yeah. about Salam, or not Salam, I talked shit about him. I was going to say yesterday. All the time. Uh, Brahim, he actually scored. I don't know mm. if you guys remember that. I talked shit to Steph about how bad Brahim was, and then he scored. So hopefully, Brahim sucks. That was months ago then. Um, that was probably. September. That was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, not good, man, not good. The attack really are struggling now, aren't they? I mean, it isn't actually, as much as we've got to try and joke about this for therapy purposes, it's not actually a laughing matter. This attack is pretty awful, you know. Um, now we can, or now we can't rely on the individual plays and creativity and, and shooting and pace of Liao. And we can seemingly rely on Giroud to be in the right place at the right time every game. You know, it's great that he did it in those big games against Inter and Napoli, but we need him to score in most games, you know, because there isn't an awful lot else going on. Brahim Diaz has found himself with a run of starts again and would have hoped to do better, hoped to play himself into some form. It's just not happening for him. Mm -hmm. It's actually painful to see him keep going out there and struggle because... It's circumstances like this that really damage a player's confidence at the age of 22, you know? Um, yeah. And then Salamak has somehow found his way back in. And that doesn't say anything about Salamakas and his quality, but rather how bad Macias had been that we just tried to change for the sake of it. Yeah. And unfortunately found ourselves in the same position where we created the square root of F all throughout the entire game. Um, it's Yeah, it's just not good enough. It's not good enough. And then you look back at the, our two last... Um, winning goal scorers were Kalulu and Benacer, and then say. you start thinking, "Oof, this really is not good." Like, rip it up and start again. Yeah, it's so bad that I was actually calling for Castillejo to start, and then of course he gets injured from muscle fatigue. It's like how are your muscles fatigue? Somehow. You don't have any, so it's, well, it's really being weird. The water boy is tough work. I guess so. Those must be heavy water bottles. I don't, I don't understand what the issue was there, but yeah, to wake up game day and. And see four of our players are injured again, you know, four new ones in, in Benacer, Castillejo, Zlatan, and Rebic. It's like, what are we going to do? We, we don't have any subs. Mm-hmm. And then you see, you know, with, with like, what, 12 minutes to go, we, we take off Tomori because he's hurt and put on Gabia. It's like, we have no depth anymore. All of a sudden, it's we're, we're back to square one where we're like, injury crisis, depth issue. It's... It's this reoccurring theme of the same issue that never gets addressed. And, you know, it, it's shocking, especially since we didn't sign any players in January. Like, how, how did we look at this in the title race and say, yeah, we're good. We don't need to spend anything, you know? So that's a bit scary. Um, that worries me for the future more so than the immediate because I, I don't know 
where we're going to end here. I don't know if it's first. It probably won't be at this point. Unfortunately, each week I'm I'm losing a bit of faith because we keep losing points. So mm-hmm. I mean, um, when yeah. your entire attack is Giroud and Liao, teams know how to defend that. When mm-hmm. your right wing and center attack can't do can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Liao's yeah. I mean, it, if the ball goes up the right side, it gets intercepted. It gets lost. Right. If it goes up the left side. That's where everyone knows it's going to go because Liao. So you put two people on him, and now it's easy. And yeah. Liao is still developing. Like he's not the hopeful world star that he's going to be. Well, and he's and tired. Yeah, yeah he's playing not, too much because yeah. he's doing all the work. <laughs> exactly, and same with Giroud. Yeah. Giroud at thirty-five should not be playing full nineties as many weeks no. in a row as he has. Well, yeah. that's also on management, I, though. Well, I think it's because his like, backup um, is a forty-year-old who can't stay fit. You know, yeah. There's or an eighteen-year-old who also star... can't stay fit. Yeah. Is he's I was wondering, is he still injured? No, he's okay now. He played a game for the Primavera over the weekend and was called up purely out of necessity for the game okay. yesterday. And it, I don't think we, there was ever any intention of him getting any minutes at all, to be honest. He was just there kind of for the squad list. Sort I don't of thing. think it would have hurt to put him on, to be honest. That's another another ninety minutes for Giroud, and it's not like we've got over a week to recover this time, like we're back at it on Friday and, and he's gonna definitely be the one starting. It's tough. Like we, we, we haven't had the depth in attack this season, or rather, when we have had the depth, it's been in the wrong places. You know, like it, I, I'm, I am worried that um, sort of like what happened last season, where the injury crisis was something we were able to battle through in the short term. It caught up with us later in the season because the backups weren't match fit and the starters were just tired, and we found ourselves in a similar situation where I think we might have burned out a little bit too early. You know, there's just it's just not there. The same intensity is not there. We're too predictable. Um, even Teo, who's been a source of a lot of good things from our attack, especially in the first half of the season, is becoming so predictable now with those runs down the middle. You know, if you get to him early and you put a tackle in on him, he loses the ball, mm-hmm. or he'll fall over under a challenge that's not even a foul. Like I, I was really willing him on to score because I wanted to see what kind of baby themed celebration he was going to do. Um, but he just became very obvious early on that he was going to have one of those games where you spend more time shouting at him than shouting for him to do something um so yeah it's it just it's just not good enough calabria on set pieces um i, I don't know there's some really questionable shit that went on um, i thought the and, subs uh, were strange as well nice cat um <laughs> lovely yeah. yeah i mean the, the gabia one for tomorrow like that's shitty but it is what it is if tomorrow's hurt it's your only option so you can't get mad at Pioli for that even if it was a terrible timing for it but the one that really confused me was Macias for for Brahim, because Salamakers was worse than Brahim. Mm-hmm. You know, I would much rather like for like than experimenting a bad player in a new position. You know, it doesn't make sense. So, yeah. and, and you could have brought Krunic on for for Brahim instead, who has played there and has had success, and we needed someone else in midfield. So why you would move your your really bad right wing to midfield so he could be really bad in midfield and then have your backup really bad right wing start. It, <laughs> like, it makes no sense to me. I, I yeah. thought that it, it was going to be finally what some of us have been calling to see him. Brahim for Messias was going to be Messias down the middle. And I thought I can maybe get behind that, you know? Yeah, I thought Messias was going to be there too. And I was like, shoot. all right. And then try and Sal- I have said that Salamakas could be tried as a number 10. Um, that wasn't the time to do it no. because he's in no confidence. It's in a game where there's no space for him to do the things that he's good at, which is very little anyway. Um, and then I think the only reason that Krunic didn't come on in the in the Trident is probably because we had nothing for the for the two in the double pivot and we knew Tenali was going to have to come off, so we knew Krunic was going to have to go on there. Um, yeah, the... Uh, the, yeah, the, the circumstances were not. Why good. not Daniel Maldini? Yeah, honestly, like, I'm at that at, point now. At, like, not? at least get him some minutes. Well, and that's like, my he's thing. He's not going like, to concede a goal. I mean, maybe, but like his defensive efforts have been better than his offensive efforts whenever he plays. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually agree with that. And the other thing is, give Lazatic some minutes. You know, at the very least, he's an unknown to both teams. So Torino's yeah. not going to know how to defend him. I mean, they might figure it out really quick. He might be a very simple one-dimensional player, but at the moment, nobody knows. So changing up, at least they know he's not going to behave like Giroud and they're going to have to change their approach. And it gives Giroud a little bit of rest. I mean, I would even argue start Lazatic against Genoa and bring on Giroud at halftime or something if, if necessary. But we just, we got to try something, you know, because doing the same stale shit week after week that hasn't been working, 
to to have like the last game we scored two goals was Udinese in a two two draw a while ago. I think that was January. Like no, I think oh. it was Salernitana or however they say their name. Salernitana. I, th- I think I, Udinese I thought it was, was more recent. Two to one. Then. They were February. I don't know. I know we scored two. Either way, it's been at least two It's months. been a while. It was before the Napoli game. You know, Napoli started our string of like three 1-0 victories and then these 0-0 draws. Like, to to score three goals in our last five is very bad. Yeah. We, we need more goals. Seven clean sheets in a row, but only four goals scored in that time. It's like how... I mean, the defense needs help, you know? Yeah. It, it needs help. Th- those clean sheets need to be converted into wins. I wouldn't be surprised if Tamari and Kalulu were looking around, and Menyan, obviously, looking around the dressing room like, lads, what the fuck's going on? These need to be wins because look at the teams that we've got coming up to play. Yeah, I, I don't back us to keep a clean sheet against Fiorentina, Sassuolo... Um, Atalanta, those are dangerous teams that score a lot of goals. I mean, we've seen Napoli get a bit of a pump in from Fiorentina and it's like, you know, we're going to have to outscore teams eventually um, because yeah. you can't expect us to concede zero goals from now until the end of the season and I'm worried that our attack is just not going to match up. I mean, obviously there's the school of thought where people are saying it'll suit us more playing teams that come at us and leave more spaces in behind but I don't look at our last five games of the season after this Genoa one and think, oh, thank God we've got some harder teams to play. Right. I think we're fucked. You know, we ain't winning any of those. That's what I think. But um, I hope to be proven wrong on it. Yeah. We're no, going to get great. some points between now yeah, and the are. season. Yeah, like, Definitely. But we always just, turn uh, it around after, you know, the springtime. We I could mean, go yeah. on an amazing run to end the season, and, and we might look at the last few games and think, ah, oh, if we haven't dropped those points there. That seemed to be what happened last but, season, and then we we found ourselves in a position where Inter overtook us, and that was it. They never let they never let the grip go. Whereas this time we've had it in our hands, and um, the mentality's not been there, and the quality's not been there above all. You know, we just haven't shown enough of it. Yeah, Drew's not a creative striker, so you have to have the creative players around him, and our players are just not creating anything for him. And that's the mm. problem because Giroud is he every time he touches the ball on the edge of the box, he immediately does a fancy little flick. And yet our, our team can't figure that out. Yet we as watching it, we we know it's gonna happen every single time the ball comes mm. towards Giroud. So he's trying to create shit for, for other people, but they like can't think that he's gonna do that. Like, does he not tell them during practice, hey, this is what I do? You know, like we all see it. Why don't they? It blows my mind that no one's ever in a position to receive one of his passes because they know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen before it happens. So why, why can't they? The um, the frustrating thing as well is the one time that, that it sort of worked out where Giroud knocked one down in added time into the path of Messias, who looked like he was going to mm-hmm. blast it in for a last minute winner. Bremer pulls out the challenge of the match. It was incredible, yeah. really. And Bremer, tough, physical, no-nonsense defender. I think couple of times he encroached and didn't get penalized for it um Giroud looked quite frustrated but he, he had a great performance he made a couple of really good late interventions um but yeah there wasn't an awful lot else for us to get excited about I mean looking ahead to next season I know that this isn't going to happen because it requires too much turnover of personnel but if you're looking at the attack and the positions that we have we probably need two center forwards we definitely need two right wingers we probably need another number 10 because I don't think Adley is um, what people say. You know, I don't think he's ready necessarily to come straight into the starting eleven because he's been benched by Bordeaux recently and they're bottom of Liga. So we can't expect him to be um, polished straight I away. Mean, and then Ben Asir was got relegated with Empoli and look at it. At least he played, though, you know. Um, and also, I think everybody kind of <laughs> right. knew... I think everyone kind of knew Ben Asser was good though as well because he was like already established in the Algerian national team and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, we're um, that the attack needs overhauling going into the summer, and I just don't think it's happening. And I, I just don't think that we, not necessarily that we don't have the money, but yeah, it's just a lot of moving parts. Um, well, because to, we have to, to replace Romagnoli, we have to replace Kessie. Yeah. So and, and we know who those people are. We know the price tag. So that's you know half the budget. Right there, mm-hmm. just on replacements. Granted, they're probably improvements, but it's still rough. And then, like you said, we need at least five more attacking players right now. A, a number mm-hmm. 10, two right wings, two strikers. I, I don't know what we're going to get, but 
I wouldn't be surprised if if we need three right wings. If if all three of our right wings leave, I mean, at this point, Salamaker is probably going to stay, even though I think that's the one you sell because you could get money for that. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's yeah. Um, that's it. I mean, a, a couple of half penalty shouts to talk about. Um, I'll mention them, but I, I can't say that I firmly believe that the one were. on Teo. I think. The more I watch it, yeah. the more I realize. Hold on, he's not. He's blatantly not playing the ball. It's not shoulder to shoulder. It's an arm in the back. Yeah, it's, it's elbow. A bit, it's a bit strange. Um, I, if that's given, it's not overturned. Exactly. But I think the ref, the very, had set his stall out that he wasn't going to give anything unless it was absolute clear cut. And also, he he made it very clear as well that he was aware Milan players were perhaps being a bit theatrical. There was the Salamarcus one in the first half where he goes down inside the box after cutting to the byline and he's like, no, he's dived. Like, Deveri actually went like that and did the diving thing. Well, so the I thing think about Deveri it. is there's pictures of him with inter suitcases. Like he's a, <laughs> yeah. He's an well, open inter fan. Apparently they're not real, but yeah. As in it's not actually him. But anyway, yeah. Uh, it, it looks what like other 50-year-old man him. has spiky hair? He's the only douchebag that looks like that. It like. is Italy. Uh, there are some yeah. questionable okay, haircuts. Enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah. That's it, I guess. A um, couple of penalty shouts. Tops and flops. Top Mike Manian for me, made a save off Vojvodina. Might have butchered his name there. But yeah, made a good save to keep the clean sheet. Needed more help for his work. There wasn't a lot else positive. Yeah, um, I'm I'm gonna say the same. He was the only one that actually did his job. I mean, I know that sounds harsh on the defense, but Tamori came off her clue, did a good job, but it's not like he wasn't beat a few times. So, well, how long is Tamori out for? Did they say he apparently should be okay for Friday? Okay, um, I'm gonna say Tonali because I thought he looked good. He looked he looked like our only competent person in attack, even though he was playing midfield. Um, yeah. and just to be different than you guys. I oh, also yeah. did say earlier that Tonali was the best one on the field. <laughs> <So laughs> ah, yeah, just but, but, ass, apparently. Um, Tonali, I yeah, did notice played. Tonali was playing between the center backs for a while, and then mm-hmm. towards the end of the second half, he moved in attack, and he was our most effective playmaker. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I I was also just like enjoying watching him play because, yeah. like, I think it was his shot in the second half. He just like took it in the box, you know, and I was like, damn, this kid's looking pretty good. Yeah, that one where he so. received it down the right and cut back. It is a mm-hmm. shame he didn't. He said after the game that he was going to shoot first time, and he might have had a better chance with that. But instead, he kind of telegraphed it, and I think that that made made it an easier save. But yeah, he was really good for about 60, 65 minutes, and then understandably he he ran out of steam. I mean, there were reports all week saying that he was going to be rested for the game, and then because Ben Asser was injured, basically had no choice but to start. And you know, there's another situation where really we could manage players better if we had a bit more depth but it's just yeah it's not there it's not happening um flop of the match christ take your pick uh not good is it across the board i don't even know everyone oh, I but know. mike and tonali i know exactly yeah. who i'm picking i know who you're I, i'm gonna say salamarkas and the reason for that is i remember specifically shouting his name when in the last 30 minutes of the game he misplaced several passes that were no more than 10 yards yes you know like basic there was one way you're trying to pass to Teo, who would have then been able to turn and then sort of make a beeline for the goal. And he sold him short with a 10 yard pass. Yeah. And it's like you're a professional footballer. You know, yeah. Stefano Sartori in 2008 could have made that pass. You know, <laughs> that's a really funny joke that very few people are going to. Yeah. Understand. Check his uh. Twitter. Check his timeline. Oh, did he? Did he tweeted all those? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm picking salve makers. I was yelled at by uh, that girl who was annoyed by halftime. I, I was told to stop cussing, but and I was doing it every time uh, salve makers touched the ball. So it's, he's my flop. Mm. That's what I used to do whenever we would pass the ball to Montalivo. I would yell. Um, I'm also going to pick Salamakers, and I just did some quick research here. There's a team in Belgium that could use that him. Uh, they're called Verton, and they're at the bottom of Division Two. Nice, so uh, he might fit in. Will fit in well there. Yeah, as the backup right back. That might be our oh. first time we've all three agreed on a on a flop. And then, that's, that's impressive. The that there was loads of candidates. Mm-hmm. I was going to do Messias, but I wanted my weekly Salamaker slander. So 
That's fair, yeah. Brahim Diaz is a good shout for me. Um, mm-hmm. I, I would stay clear of Leal because he made that one really good run, but then he didn't pick his head up. He tried to dribble it around the keeper for some reason rather than just I thought Brahim it. was better than both Sal Makers and yeah, Macias. Yeah. Macias would um, be my, my pick if Sal Makers wasn't as awful as he was. But he always is going to be that awful. So. Teo was... Yeah. Um, Teo was really frustrating as well, but maybe he's not getting sleep. Maybe the cry- baby's yeah, crying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's um, got money. He can pay for a nanny. The baby's still gonna cry. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he just gets an apartment or something away from the, the house. I'm leaving y'all. Big enough, yeah. Might live in a house big enough that he can be in a different postal code to it. Um, but yeah, not not great. Let's hope for better on Friday. Friday night football. These mm-hmm. are always kind to us, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, a good classic uh, midweek game. Yeah, Genoa at home uh, at San Siro. Don't know about you boys, but I am not really feeling confident for this. Um, recent results and also our recent record against Genoa at San Siro just doesn't fill me with an awful lot of, of optimism. I know we won last season 2-1, but it was thanks to an own goal from Scamaccia. And then the season before that, um, we lost... And that was around the lockdown time when it was in front of an empty stadium. Uh, I just feel like really difficult games. The, the the thing is, this shouldn't actually be a difficult game for us. I mean, Genoa are rooted inside the bottom three. They've won one game in the league since the 12th of September. They've only won two games all season. Um, what they had before they beat Torino, they slot beat Torino, uh, on the 18th of March, is a run of eight draws in a row. Um, so they, uh, they've they got a bit of the Bologna syndrome about them, you know. Uh, quite hard to beat, seemingly, but just never win either. Um, I so, think yeah, they... we had a situation like this two years ago with Benevento when they got their first league win. First ever yeah. league win. First yeah. ever and then their win. first away win against... Or, you know what? They got their very first Serie A point against us they with did, the yeah. uh, Brignoli. Brignoli goalkeeper yeah. goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say in the last game, they lost 4 1 uh, against Lazio. Um, so, you know, not great there. Um, and they are really struggling to score goals. In fact, they've scored. Oh, God. They've not scored multiple goals in a game since November. Hmm. Only a little worse than us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm looking at it like this, and it has nothing to do with the actual game itself. Um, against Cagliari, I said, "Oh, this will be the blowout. We're going to win, you know, four, five, six nil." Stop and it was it. it was one nil. The yeah. next week, I said, "All right, well, this will probably be it." Against Bologna, zero zero. I did not say it would be a blowout against Torino, but I said I think it's going to be easier than people think. It'll be two one or three one. Zero zero. So mm-hmm. I'm going to do the exact opposite and say this will be zero zero. I thought you said Genoa were gonna win four nil or something. No, I guess that would be the exact opposite. Yeah, but I, I no. just can't in good conscience say is Genoa's gonna win anything. I mean, I know you're doing it for superstitious purposes, but I genuinely don't think we're gonna win this game. This is gonna be another team. I mean they're fighting for their lives, so they're coming thinking a point in this would be good, and then we leave it up for the final sprint. Um, they're going to come and make things really, really difficult for us. Uh, I, I'd imagine. Um, I mean, the, the point the last doesn't game, do them any good. They're they're too low. They need yeah. they need wins. Well, they probably take a point in this and then leave it up to the final five games when they've got an easier. Thing. Well, just everyone I'm above them has games in hand. I'm yeah. going to say that we're going to be doomed. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to call for. Daniel Maldini to play 30 minutes. Also, I would honestly take that. I would love it. I was also doing my research here, you know? Yeah. You could and have that. If there was nine teams in the Division Two of Belgium and Everton was one of them, they'd be second to last. Oh, my God. Uh, that's a very specific and odd stat. I don't yeah, know I'm struggling. To that based, on the point, but... based on points. But I'm why are there only nine teams? There's only eight teams in the league. It's a small country. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Genoa. I anyway, that, my bad. <laughs> I was so confused. Like, why are we taking out more than half the teams? Sempre toffees. Uh, 
the Genoa have one guy who's scoring goals, basically. It's Matty Adestro. We know him. We had him on loan. He scored against us before. Uh, he's on nine for the season, which, funnily enough, in the league would make him our top scorer. So, joke all you want, but, you know, we're shit. Uh, Domenico Crescito is another one. Um, he missed the return fixture, if I remember rightly, and, and they do miss him when he doesn't play. Uh, but he's got five for the season. Then after that, you're looking at two, one, 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 one. In fact, they've had 10 scorers all season, and I think we're on 17 different goal scorers for the season. So, they're just really, really struggling to score goals. Uh, this might be their year. This really might be their year to go down. Uh, they're the second lowest scorers in the division with 24 scored. Um, that's why my predictions are nil-nil and not a 1-1 or a 2-2. Um, but their defensive record actually isn't all that bad, uh, apart from a few hidings they took earlier in the season. They've been more resolute. And then they lost 4-1 against Lazio at the weekend. So, Yeah, I think they could. teams right now could smell the blood of, of Milan that we're not scoring. And I think Genoa needs wins they, they can't be taking draws at this point so i think they're going to push forward and it's going to leave them open for some counters and it might be the, the game that we score but for the sake of superstition i'm still saying zero zero yeah however that's not really what i think i'm gonna say two nil for who we'll leave that to be decided <laughs> Everton decided. in the second division in belgium <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um yeah let's let's i mean let's just Get an early goal, shall we, lads? That'd be nice because I'm sick to death of it getting to 60 minutes and seeing the other team time waste. Taylor talked about it. It does annoy me. I'd hope that we did the same if we had a narrow lead that we wanted to cling on to and stuff. I loved it when we did it against Inter when we were 2 1 up. Um, but yeah, it is frustrating when you're on the receiving end of time wasting and like their keeper was, even from when he had the ball in his hands, he meant to have six seconds. He was taking a good 20 seconds to get rid of the ball. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, do enough to take it out of the the referee and the opposition goalkeeper's hands would probably be the um, advice on that from... Uh, Who all is supposed to be coming back for Friday? Is it just Tamori? Um, Pioli said that Ibra, Rebic, Benacer, Castillejo all just had mm. fatigue and he hopes to have them all back for Friday. What happened in that final training session, I do not know. Like Something's gone wrong for four players to drop with, with muscle problems. Um, something needs radically overhauling with that. I mean, Zlatan you know? said it's it's the training pitch there. It's too firm, and if everyone's getting the same injuries mm. during practice, it probably is. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I would love to have some kind of insight, and obviously we'd go into it not knowing the slightest idea of how to set up a team from a fitness point of view. But if you were to compare our methods, say with like a, a Man City, Liverpool, a Bayern Munich, a team who play really intense or try to like we do um, and and see how their methods differ to ours, um, I bet it'd be shocking. I, yeah. I think it would be a shock. Uh, yeah, not, not great having so many players out because it gives purely headaches and stuff. But yeah, the main hope for me is that Tamori's okay. It was a bit of a calf problem by the sounds of it, but then purely said after the game that he was just tired. But he's done that before where he's come out and said, oh, he's he's fine, he's just tired. And then it comes out that he needs knee surgery yeah, or something. Um, you didn't have any talking points before I put it up. I was about to click it and then I was like, I don't know what to bring up. Um, I'm going to put it on and just briefly give a, a bullet and um, I don't know what on. Uh, stadium, everyone hates each other. The clubs hate the council. The two different mayors in the area of Milan hate each other. Clubs might now be moving to the site of a former steelworks where they're going to build the same project. But Salah, the Milan mayor, is basically doing all kinds of political games to try and get the teams to stay wants to put stuff to a public vote. Basically, we're no closer to seeing that first shovel go in the ground, so that is really frustrating. Uh, our president and Inter CEO came out and gave an interview saying that they were hoping it would be quicker and all that kind of stuff. It's just typical Italian bureaucracy. It does my head in. We won't dwell on that. Um, in terms of signings, there's not an awful lot. We've been linked quite a lot with Marco Asensio, though, in the last week, so we should probably talk a little bit about him. 26-year-old at Real Madrid. Uh, I think he's on 10 league goals for the season, so would be our top scorer. He risks finding a little bit less space next season if they sign Mbappe. Obviously, they've got Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, um, Benzema. You know, they're pretty well stocked in attack. 
Um, how do we feel about Asensio? I mean, for me, it's like it's a no-brainer. Um, if it were if it were to be an operation that would be done in around the twenty million mark, you know, he's got plenty of good years in the tank. Was never really blessed with express pace, so he's adapted his game quite well. Can play ten or could also play out on the right. So that might then mean we only need one big investment on a right winger because mm-hmm. we could have him fill in if needed. Um, would be an absolute upgrade on Brahim Diaz. I think he'd find Syria pretty easy as well, to be honest. There's not a lot of technical players of his level in this league. And also, he has won plenty. You know, I think he's on 11 trophies with Real Madrid, including three mm-hmm. or four Champions Leagues. Like This is a guy who knows how to win. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and he's contributed in those winning seasons too. It's mm-hmm. not like Brahim, who has trophies to his name, but was always a, a third strings backup player. You know, mm-hmm. this guy's good he was like the next coming of of the lord and savior when when he first broke onto the scene and then he's fallen off quite a bit and i I think he had some injury crisis as well but overall man he's still would he's an animal i think you're right he's he's technically above the majority of syria he could play right wing he could play attacking mid those are the players maldini's looking for is is the versatile guy so that we could not sign as much as possible you know Take that how you will. It may not be a good thing, may not be a bad thing, but the reality is that's what we do. So it makes sense for us. It's a good mm-hmm. profile. Um, and if we could get the price right and get a salary right, then we're in very good shape. Because mm-hmm. right now so- I think he's asking for for seven million, which would put him at our our highest earner. But then again, you look at it; he's twenty six. He's in his prime. Also, moving to a league that might be better you for have him. To spend you got to cop up like that. You know, yeah, you got to push the butt out. Yeah, and you if do. you want to continuously play in Champions League. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those and, players request high, you know, yeah. salaries. Especially if we're, you know, arguably about to win the league, maybe two years in a row, finishing second at worst. Like, you know, if you want to continue that momentum, if you want to push for a title at some point in the near future, you're going to have to pay for players mm-hmm. that know how to win titles. Mm, yep. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I mean, the, the, they've done a great job, this management of trimming the wage budget down and getting rid of the earners that are unnecessary. I mean, Kessie leaving, it's not a massive amount, but Romagnoli leaving, for example, trims it's quite a bit huge. of our gross salary. Um, and there will come a time when that wage bill has to inflate again, because uh, otherwise we we won't be winning trophies. It's that simple, especially when it comes to renewals and stuff. You need to pay them what they're worth there and yeah. then, otherwise they will go, you know, they will go. That's that's what's been proven. Uh, Sensio, I, I mean... Would I feel comfortable about making someone like that our outright highest paid player? Probably not. You would hope that we can get him for a little bit cheaper than what the reports are saying. But at the same time, I think he's just about banished those ideas that he's still injury prone. You know, mm-hmm. he's played 39 games this season. So he's he's got back into a rhythm from a physicality point of view. That's good. Also, some of our smartest business in recent years has been signing what you would call fringe players from elite clubs. Yep. You know, Teo's come and made a massive impact. Fikayo Tamori, um, same sort of thing at Chelsea, where, frankly, the squad just grew too big for him and he was yeah. forced out. And it, exactly. it was uh, in better from our point of view. Even players like, yeah, you know, we, we picked him up because he wasn't getting any game time where he was. We saw value in him. We nurtured him and, and um, he's become very good, mm-hmm. you know. Same with Giroud. Um, I mean, obviously, he was older and was about to leave for free, but same thing. It's mm, just a surplus yeah. of, of players at Chelsea, and you know that doesn't mean the ones that are no longer necessary are bad players. It's just that's the level of a club like that. So the players on the out are still better than the majority of, of clubs at our level. Could be that Origi comes in as well, and it would be a similar situation with him Another at one. Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so interesting to monitor on that from um, a lot of journalists who you would consider to be kind of like close sources and stuff have been saying that we'll be looking for that kind of deal again. You know, the the, re, the redundancies from big clubs. I wonder if they do a loan with obligation to buy. Probably. His, That's his contract to. runs out in 2023, so it wouldn't be possible. Yeah. Just buy him. Uh, Which is honestly fine because then it's, it's a cheaper price. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also if... I did read something from Spain saying that Real Madrid want Brahim Diaz back. So if we somehow did that to facilitate getting a sense, I don't know oh what they God. want him for. <laughs> yeah, not. I'd good. be happy to make that deal. Happy you know to make what that happens deal. as well. Brahim's the one who says no because he wants guarantees over his playing time. We should just mm-hmm. tell him a sense. He's going to start every game over you. So mm-hmm. go home, little elf. Um, 
Right, let's do some questions, shall we? I saw we got quite a few. These are always fun. Um, not that one, that's from March. Uh, oh, no. Okay, found it. Sal- Rohit asks, Salamakas, keep or sell? <laughs> um, release. <laughs> like, just get him the <laughs> hell out of yeah. here. Um, yeah, yeah, sell him. I think we could actually get a decent amount of profit off of him. Uh, even if he's awful i think his value compared to what we bought him for is still significantly higher and i mean that alone will pay for a transfer it'll pay for someone's wages a renewal whatever it be and if we're bringing in players like we need to then then he's not going to get game time next season anyway so yeah sell him sell um there's always been i don't say media speculation but it's always been reported in the media that he's a player that you know, we're, we're going to back Maldini believes in the investment, purely believes in the fact that he can develop him and stuff. But only recently has the narrative kind of changed and, and certain journalists like Daniele Longo and stuff have been saying he's actually fighting for his future now because there are some clubs who are going to come in and offer bids and mm-hmm. the chance to give us a capital gain, given we only paid 3.5 mil transfer fee, um, three and a half mil loan, but basically half the cost of the overall deal. So, yeah, we could make a nice capital gain on him. We could potentially do the same on Rebic if he doesn't convince because he only cost us four mil thanks to some crafty accounting in that Andre Silva deal. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 we've got to consider bids that come in. We really do. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes sometimes things just don't work out. We, we all wanted him to develop into something special. We've seen glimpses of his ability, <laughs> but we all fairly quickly accepted that the best he was going to be is a, a hard-working runner of a right winger who was going to give us a bit of balance tactically. And he hasn't kicked on from there. And now he's making decisions that that cost us, you know? so And they go blatantly against the instruction Peel is giving him. And mm-hmm. I think that's the big thing. Because mm-hmm. you could perform poorly, but as long as you're doing exactly what the manager tells you to do, then it then it's not on you, you know. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, well, look, I, I'm just doing what you told me to do. But mm-hmm. when it's do A and he instead does B and then gives away a counter well, and almost concedes, it's like, what was it? Pioli was telling him to dribble into the corner, and he went and tried to cross the ball into the. Yeah, he said take it to the corner flag, and he yeah. instead tried to dribble in between two players, yeah. gave it away, and there was a shot the tail had to save with the sliding challenge in like stoppage time, and mm-hmm. that that was the day he died to me. What Plain game was that in? I can't remember, but the fire is still there in my eyes. I just I hate died it. one a long time. Ago. It was one the Empoli at home. We were one nil. It was a game we won one nil. Yeah, yeah. It yeah one of I those. think it was that. And then didn't he do relatively similar thing in the yes in the next he, game? every single game he has done it's really really this poor. weird step over cross inside thing, and he's <laughs> given it away. Like he's not this weird a... step over cross. <laughs> Well, like, and, and that's the it? thing that, like his his fans are like he's a great dribbler. He's got a uh, work rate. It's like he's not a good dribbler. He's fucked it up every time he, he loses the ball. And then they yeah. and then the same people are saying bad things about Messias dribbling. It's like at least Messias gets off a dribble or two, like and can get a shot on target. Yeah, like I'm not saying Messias is good. He's he's like, let me down significantly. But if our hey, options are money. are signing Messias on a permanent deal for three million. And selling salad makers for twenty, or keeping salad makers and just not signing, signing Macias, it's a no brainer to me. You know, it's a no brainer. Keep Macias; he's cheaper. Make the money off salad makers who's and sign someone who's going to start. Salad makers for twenty million. Everton. Yeah, honestly, they're Fuck dumb enough. No. <laughs> oh, how are. funny would that they've be? Done, they are, they, they've done some pretty bad business before. You spent forty odd on Deli Alley. <laughs> Especially no, if they're going to the championship, they're going to need a expensive. second league player. Del- that we on, we're only paying if he plays ten games or more. That's okay, it's not, not about Everton, but how mad would it be? How mad would you be if you guys got relegated and then you're you're big signing a salad maker? <laughs> I would be furious. I would. I hope it happens just for the meltdown. I already have a meltdown every time field. we lose. Weekly. Um, <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> next question. Had a lot of them. Um, Berezi the goat sins. You guys work with people in the know at the club. Why isn't the right wing a priority? Uh, we have rock solid defense with Tamari and Kalulu. I know we need depth at centre back, but to me, isn't that isn't the priority? Am I right or am I delusional? You're not delusional. Um, we 
I suppose, yeah. like we have our sort, they're not sources inside the club or anything like that, but we have sources who relay information to us and then that's what we publish. The right wing is a priority. Um, we will sign an, a, at least one attacking player this summer, um, but it was more so that Berardi wasn't a priority because 30 million price tag at the age of 20, what will be 28, that's not an Elliot deal. That's just not the way that they like to spend money. Um, so we we don't think that Berardi is a concrete target at the moment. If they lower their asking price, then he might become one. But Maldini values him at about 15 million. So there needs to be a lot done there to meet in the middle. Um, I think we're, we're probably going for, for other profiles. Asensio, I'm not surprised he's come up as a name, even though he would probably be... I think he'd probably be a little bit cheaper, but you know he's a, he's a proven difference well, maker on the. You think he'd be step. cheaper? I thought he'd be a little bit more expensive. Well, the, the thing we 20, do 25. is if we're buying someone within the league, the transfer fee's got to be extremely low. And mm-hmm. if we buy someone outside of the league, we could spend more because we have the growth decree. We know that yeah. we're going to get that tax return. Like exactly, it it's beneficial to sign okay. our more expensive players out of country. That's what we've been doing. I think that's why mm-hmm. we we're just raiding League One. Like they have so many promising youngsters that. Makes sense. So that's why Sanchez is off now. Is that what I read? Or like no. not off, but the team is t- turned off by his demands or something. The, the, there's work to be done because he his agent's Jorge Mendes, and he's gonna like try and get the best possible deal for his client. It sounds like we pretty much agreed a transfer fee with Lille in January, mm-hmm. and that's that's still in place. Like they'd still be happy to accept. I think it's the twenty million that we offered. But Renato Sanchez, with his injury problems and stuff, we're not willing to offer him um, the salary that he wants, which I guess is around six million net per season. You know, we would have just paid Kessie that if we if we were right. going to stick to that principle. Um, so yeah, I, I think he needs to. Look. There sounds to still be confidence that it's going to go through. Okay, but in the meantime, met with um, Sport Three Hundred and Sixty agency and Julian think, Weigel. Ben, yeah, Julian. Yeah. Uh, Benfica's Julian Vigel, Vigel, whatever. Um, he he could be an alternative. That would be good. I think he's pretty good to be honest. But I I think he'd be more expensive from a transfer fee point of view. So yeah, a lot of moving parts. It's never dull, is it? Um, but yeah, in in response to the question, I think the right wing. You know, Maldini and Masara are not blind. Pioli's going to come out and defend the players that he currently has to work with. But they know that something's needed on the right side. Um, if not, then they're just simply not competent. Uh, Stefano can't be here. He's working. He's down the coal face. Uh, should Zlatan retire? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah um, move him into a technical role. Keep yep. him at the club because that's made a huge difference. And I think with his injury, we're starting to see kind of the drop off because I think he's not showing up as much when he's hurt, you know, because he's already implemented that mentality that like winner's way you know like when he got hurt the first season he arrived he was at every game every practice he was still shouting at him in the locker room now that they're they get it he's he's kind of letting off a bit and we're seeing the results drop so i think let him retire because i think his body's done but give him a technical role so that he can still be there to yell at him and, and keep him going that's my biggest fear is we don't replace him with a true new starting striker when he is gone and then we just we, we go back to where we were before him that's my biggest fear Mm. Yeah, I, I would definitely keep him around. And you've almost got to ask him what he wants to do. Does he want to be like a first team manager or a coach or something so he can still impart his playing wisdom and, and his leadership that way? Or does he fancy going more into the you know di- direct directorial, director yeah. type route? Um, maybe shadowing Maldini and Masara for a bit and, and getting his uh, qualifications that way. Don't know, up to him, but I would like him in and around because he's still a big face of, of the resurgence that we've had in the last couple of years and uh, he's still got a lot to offer to the game, definitely. Um, my, my gut instinct now is that he's going to call it a day at the end of the season. I really did think that he was going to sign a renewal, but the Sweden thing and the fact that he... Has had to miss the last game with a knee overload. Um, that it's just not good. They're piling up, and he's not even doing anything. It's not like he's playing a run of five games and getting these injuries. He just can't get onto the field anymore, and it's quite sad. But then my gut is also that he might postpone any 
any decision on what he wants to do after football for a little bit. So he might go back and be involved with Hammerby or something, and then he might come back to us. I don't know. I just, I just can't see it being a straightaway transition into an upstairs role. But I hope that is what happens. Um, Farino, Di Marzio reported that Elliot had made funding available in the January window, and the management elected not to use those funds. In hindsight, should they have done so, or were they right to wait until the summer with another UCL qualification in the bag? That's a tough one, um, mm. because the decision to not use those funds was financial. You know, it was to help us down the line with the accounting and, and make it look like we've hit good numbers this season because we have. And if we were to have splashed fifteen, twenty, whatever it may have been in January, then then those numbers would have changed significantly. And we had renewals to to go over. You know, we thought we were still going to get Cassie back. And uh, we had stuff like that to to address. So I don't think it was necessarily that they thought we're good enough. It was more so we have priorities that we have to address first. And then if those didn't pan out, you know, then then we're in the situation that we're in now. But um, in hindsight, do I say it was wrong? I mean, obviously, we're, we're slipping points. We need, need to sign something. But in the moment, I understand why they didn't. Mm. I think we should have signed a striker. That place, I agree with that. Yeah, those I think, don't come cheap in January, do they? I no, just think the like, one signing we did make score goals to win games, right? And to sign an 18 year old who is a third string who's not going to get any minutes <clears throat> that's silly. That's really silly. I would have much rather them sign like on loan a, a decent to subpar right wing that could maybe make an impact over what we got now. You know, like there were areas that needed addressing, and a third string striker wasn't that area. Obama Young would have won us the league. That's all I'm going to say. What, what is uh, his salary? Like 30 mil a season? I don't know what he's on at Barca. No, he probably actually isn't on that big a salary because Barca haven't got any to dish out, have they? They uh, got I know unlimited I know he... money. They just got that Spotify deal for like 400 million up front. Ridiculous. Yeah, but they still money. have. But it's still subject to the La Liga wage bill. Yeah. Like, Ferrant, who is it? Some of the star players have had to take a pay cut just to stay. That's kind of sad. But anyway, whatever. Uh, we tried to spend in January, like we we had the fee agreed for Renato Sanchez, and he was going to be our signing. It makes you wonder: would we have signed him and played him number ten? Was that the plan? Mm. Um, maybe to to kind of bolster the attack a little bit. We know what happened with Roman Ferver, um, how we ended up missing out on him, despite arguing over the sake of two or three million. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know, man. Um, not, not a fan of signing players just for the sake of it, because I think it should in the last January window when we got Mario Mandzukic just because he was available and Swaliho Mete, who never really made a massive contribution for us, that um, just signing bodies to have bodies isn't always useful. Um, you know we went out for a centre-back as well and we, we couldn't get Botman. They didn't want to sell him. So I think rather than go for the third or fourth choice target down the line, they've said, right, let's just hang in there. We're going to get our objective, which is top four. Just to be clear, the objective is top four. Um, that's what it's always been and that's what's budgeted for. And then in the summer, um, we will keep those funds and try and use them in a better way when clubs are more willing to sell. But frustrating, isn't it? As fans, we want shiny new toys and... We, we like to look back with hindsight and say this player would have made us 10 points clear at this point. But I also think there's not an awful lot of market in a uh, lot of value in the January market. You tend to overpay for players. Um, yeah, I'll leave it up to the financial experts. Um, we've talked a bit about Lazatic not playing against Torino. Um, Chi Resonero asks Is it time to move on from Ante Rebic? He has, for Milan standards, a high salary that he doesn't perform up to even when he is available, Cashian while he's still under 30. Thoughts on that? He's not wrong. Or they're not wrong. He's had a tough season. Know. He has. I think I'd give another season to see what he does. Because, I mean, he has performed well for us, but also he's going to be behind Liao. Like, he's, he's not going to take Liao's starting position. So I don't, I don't know how much he's making, but if you want to pay a backup as much as he's making, then keep it well and it's been his fitness as well he hasn't yeah. been able to stay fit this season so if he can stay fit then you know maybe there's a confidence a... player yeah you know, i agree if he's gonna be back up he needs to come in and play very well yeah he needs game time so <laughs> maybe nice. maybe that is reason to get rid of him so also, start that... him at striker him that's and what i was gonna Leo say yeah, play yeah very yeah. well together yeah yeah the we problem is we... then then we need a backup 
for left yeah. wing. Yeah. Well, it makes me wonder if that's well, why like, we've been linked with Genoa. certain players. Yeah, like, strikers, what I mean. like Noah Lang and stuff like that, who people were saying, why would we go for another left winger? It makes me wonder if we have got something in mind on that front. You know, we, mm-hmm. we've been linked with um, Hamed Traore today from yeah. Sassuolo, who's he's having such a good season and he's really young and um, he's predominantly a left winger. And it just makes you wonder if there is going to be a bigger shift in the bodies than we think in the summer. Um, Rebic earns three and a half mil net per year, which is about 4.5 with the growth decree, according to the spreadsheet I've just brought up. Um, so, yeah, he is kind of a, a highish earner for a player who's going to make, what, like 10, 15 starts a season maximum, probably, if Leao didn't get injured. And this season's been tough for him. You know, we've, we, last couple of seasons, he's reached double figures in goals. It's not happening this season, let's face it, unless he goes on a real tear at the end of the season. Um, he's struggling fitness wise now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I would cash in if there was an offer to make big money. And also, I think the player's going to have a big say in it. If he, at this age, doesn't want to kick on and try and find a starting role somewhere, then that probably says quite a bit about him. Same with Castillejo as well. Uh, but also, if he does absolutely love it here and he's he, he's got it in his mind to try and change Pioli's mind and still be useful to the cause and all that, then. Um, yeah, keep him around because I think he has had a bit of bad luck this season and we know that there is an ice-cold finisher in there and a decisive player in there. Um, we've seen it, but we just haven't seen it this season. So obviously recency bias kicks in and it's like, yeah, sell him for 10 million. We'll see. We'll see. I think it'll be up to him. Um, that's it, boys. Anyway, uh, appreciate if you all managed to sit through this one. Um, not nice. Sit through is a short one. Yeah, it's going to be We're an hour. an hour. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, we, we, um, we're we going to record, we think, before the second leg of the Coppa Italia semi-final. So we'll review the Genoa game and then, yeah, we'll, we'll preview the um, the Cup semi-final. So yeah, that'll be out in around about a week. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I've been your host, Ollie Fisher. AJ, thank you for sitting through this. Yep, uh, Tucker 45. That's me. Matt it. Edward underscore underscore toe. Hey, I've done it as well. <laughs> right, <Ad. laughs> I like slowly picked up my hand. Yeah, yeah just in case. And then right you could go like that. that if you didn't if you didn't mean to do it. Yeah. <sighs> um yeah, as always, check us out on all the social medias and stuff. Like, comment, subscribe on YouTube to boost the algorithms. That would be great. Go and follow Sempre Milan IT on Twitter and Facebook if you haven't already. Um, appreciate a lot of you will be English speaking, but we have quite a lot of exclusive stuff on there first that you can translate and also videos and photos from the match and stuff like that. So, yeah, go follow those guys. And, yeah, thank you if you made it this far. Hopefully next time we have some goals to talk about. That would be nice. But yeah, thank you. We'll catch you in a week's time. Ante, eccolo Ante Ante in area di rigore. Ante Ante, Ante Ante, Ibra, gol! Vediamo se è buono, ce l'ho da buono, ce l'ho da buono, ce l'ho da buono.